Welcome to the Exploratorium, to the webcast studio, and today we're going to be talking uh, about sound. This is one of four different sound webcasts that we're doing, the third of four actually. The first one we talked about the terminology of sound and how to make sound. The second one we talked about resonance. Here we're going to talk about interference, and our la next and last segment we're going to be talking about uh, harmonics. So. Before we start, I want to talk a little bit about what interference is. It sounds like uh, something that's wrong, it's something that you shouldn't be doing. But interference is something that happens whenever you cross two waves together. And you can, do, you can get two different results when you, uh, when you combine waves together. They can either combine constructively or destructively. So you can have destructive interference, in which case two waves add up <coughs> to nothing, or you can have constructive interference where they add together and make something bigger than either of the two waves are to start with. So I want to take a look about that, at that a little bit. So let's start by looking at constructive interference. In constructive interference, here I have two waves. And you'll notice that those waves are kind of lined up. Now the top part of the wave is called the crest and the, the valley part of the wave is called the trough. And here you can see they're lined up crest to crest and trough to trough. And if I bring those two waves together like this and I combine them, if they're two speakers for instance, they'll combine like this and you'll get a wave that's twice as big as the, either of the two original waves, assuming they're both the same size. So you get the result that's twice as big. Now that's constructive interference. In destructive interference, you'll probably guess, you'll probably get way ahead of me now. Here is a, a look at destructive interference, and here you'll notice that the two waves are not lined up with each other. Here the crest of one wave is lined up with the trough of the other wave, and the trough of the top wave is lined up with the crest of the bottom wave. So when I combine them like this, the crest of one wave can fill in the trough of the other wave, and the result, surprisingly, is nothing. Two waves, two somethings here can add up to nothing, and that's kind of a surprising result. Let's actually listen to that. I have, for instance, two tuning forks right here in front of me, and if I I'm going to get the microphone over here so you can hear them out on the web. I'm going to put the microphone in front. And if I play them separately, you'll notice that they are slightly different tones. Slightly different. This one's a little lower than this one right here. And if I play them together, Notice you're hearing the sound come in and go away. You're hearing them interfere with each other. I can do that with these, uh, our total zero distortion Meyer speakers over here. I have a couple of oscillators here and I can turn those up. I'll put the microphone in front of those, that speaker now. We have two speakers and each one's going to make a separate tone. That's one speaker, and there's the other speaker. If I turn them both up to about the same volume now, you hear that warbling happening? That warbling is when the waves get loud, they're in phase, they're lined up crest to crest, trough to trough, and when they, you hear it go soft, that's when they're lined up the opposite way, when the trough and the crest are lined up to each, with each other, and that's destructively interfering. Now let's take a look at that, uh, that warbling, let's take a look at that, that's called beats. So here, for instance, I have a diagram, I have two different waves, and one of them is a slightly higher pitch, the green one, is a slightly higher pitch than the uh, yellow one is. And so if I line them up with each other like this, overlap them, you'll notice that at first, over on the side of the screen, they're together, they're crest to crest, trough to trough, but as you move across the screen, they get out of phase, they get, line up destructively, then they get back in phase, and they line up constructively, destructively, and that makes something called a beat note, and that's what you were hearing here, where the waves get in and out and in and out of alignment or phase with each other. Looks kind of like this if you want to look at the, just the wave. So those are beat notes. You can make visual beat notes as well. 
Here I have, let's just look at interference, visual interference. Here I have two uh, sets of lines. There's 64 lines on this piece of paper here. And I have made a transparency. And if I show you the transparency, it also has 64 lines on it. If I overlap them, let me overlap them precisely so they're line, crest to crest, trough to trough. Oops. There we go. And so you can now see that they're all lined up. You can see the white and dark lines quite nicely. If I misalign them, crest to trough, like this, now they're canceling each other out. We can see in there, that's destructively interfering. But what if I now have one with uh, slightly closer lines than the card? Here I have another transparency. And if I line that up here, you'll see visual beats. There we go. So there you're seeing visual beats. And that actually, visual beats, this is called a moray pattern. And you may have seen those out uh, in the museum here. We have some nice moray pattern exhibits. And you can, if you, if you turn, turn them next to each, you see the moray patterns if I misalign them in different ways. Now these beat notes, let's listen to that again really carefully. I can change how fast those beat notes occur by detuning the notes. So I have one note here that I can, I can turn up and down. I'm going to turn this back up. If I detune it, listen. The beat notes come faster. As a matter of fact, if you count the number of those beats per second, that's the difference in frequency between the two notes. So now that we're hearing maybe four beats per second, one of these oscillators is four cycles per second higher than the other. Let's turn that down because it gets annoying. I want to show you that, what those look like. I have a, uh, an oscilloscope here that I can put, show you, um, and I can uh, put those two waves up again. So there's one of the waves, and I want to put up the other wave here. There's the two waves together, and you can see they're drifting relative to each other. And that, I can look at those combined, and we can look at the beat note. If I add those two together, let's add them together like that. And there you can see them moving. Let me tune it closer together. There you see con constructive, there's constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive. So there you're seeing the waves actually adding together uh, on this oscilloscope. And that's um, about all I have to say about interference. Uh, if you have any questions from our live audience here, please feel free to come up and ask. Stay tuned for the web audience for our next segment, which will be talking about harmonics. See you later.